Oh, yeah, I'll just record yeah. it simultaneously and uh, I'll put it up. So so people who find it on ours later as a recording, they're going to go deja vu and I'll right. have to warn them. For those watching, yes, this has already been live on Ivan's channel, just so you know. All right. <laughs> so. And I'm going to start live streaming it now, which takes a second. And then yeah, I don't know if it's in Zoom you're talk muted, Dell, or if it's your own microphone on your computer. I don't know how you're muted, but Ivan has power here, so he may have muted you. He may have control of you. I have not. I have not. <laughs> uh, although very often, like when you first join Zoom, you've got to set like you've got to like select what audio you're going to do. Yeah. If you haven't done that, then you're. Yeah, it's something you'll take over, right? Some other. Uh... It might mean you need you may need to leave Discord, Dale, because your Discord might have control of your mic too. I don't know how that. Oh works. yeah, yeah. That I think I think sometimes one of those will absolutely take control of all your audio. So I, I got out of Discord and everything. I'm just in uh, Zoom here. All right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, come on. It doesn't. What do you mean you don't like the word marsh? Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, all right. Anyhow. So we're going to go live. We're going to go live now. Nice. All right. So, well, for, for yeah. our, uh, for our uh, uh, part of this, we are, this is Candid Conversations with Dell podcast. Of course, uh, we're going to be here with Ivan today. I don't know what Ivan will call it on his channel. Uh, just another chat with guys. I don't know. Yeah, probably just a chat. With us. Yeah, there we go. You'll hear an echo for one second. Yeah, I'll keep it there. Good. So. So it's actually actually streaming, hooray! And so I'm don't just say wait. anything. I will. Don't say anything I will crazy appear again. <laughs> oh, we lost. Dale. Yeah, there not too goes. crazy. I always, I always tell the guys um, on the when we're live streaming the, the games, like you know, if there's if there's anything else that you you want to say now, right? You know, say it before we go live. <laughs> just, That's right. just let me know. Say say now because you know. <laughs> Because yeah, we can get yeah, you know I can I can catch the if I caught some of those guys midstream and some of you know the rabbit holes would go down like nobody wants nobody you know we're professionals we don't want that stuff that's right yeah I, uh, they caught me one day uh, Dell caught me went live with me uh, uh, talking about uh, the political system so it's pretty funny and then and then I wasn't yeah. done with my point so I had to say to Dell's like we're live and I'm like I don't care I got to finish this point I can't you can't boy Dale, oh, let boy. Me finish oh. it. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So you know, it's been a while since you asked to chat with me. So I'm like looking back, like, what the hell do we want to talk about? I know it was about Call of Cthulhu. There's Dell. I can we, hear him. We can I hear can't you. See him. You can hear. You can hear me yeah. now. Well, okay. uh, Dell and I were both really uh, you, digging sir. your Call of Cthulhu games with Anthony, and your and we were really digging the uh, conversation about uh, uh, in character as character, but also it kind of in conjunction with a sanity mechanics right, of Call right. of Cthulhu. So I was kind of hoping, I, if you don't mind, I want to kind of backtrack to that, especially of late, because yeah, we've, been, absolutely. we've kind of been talking about IC play of late, right? So I had some questions for you. However, we don't have to make it that formal, but I thought uh, we could even ask questions. I think Dale may have some questions. Um, get your take. Um, so I, I was going to start it off. Uh, if you want to talk IC, let's talk a little bit about that. Do you have anything in particular you want to talk about? Oh, like that's what I, 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 I want to <laughs> yeah, I saw that man. You know, you got the thing going. You know, as, as Conan O'Brien, I, I can't, said, I can't do that. As Conan O'Brien, after Conan O'Brien uh, was fired or whatever, or left, uh, and and he wore a beard, and uh, there's that great quote: Conan sitting there in his chair, and the guy said, "What's up with the beard?" He said, "Listen, any man with a beard has gone through some bad shit." <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've had, I've had them. I've had them, but yeah, I haven't had a beard for a while. Actually, yeah. I think it was, it was probably like four years ago. Was right, before right. Megan that passed away. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what we do, right? When we're coping yeah. with some some stuff. Yeah, some stuff, right? every once in a while. So yeah, so I could do it, but I just can't grow, grow the rest. Right, you know? right. I kind of wish I couldn't. I can shave it, but I got tired of shaving it, so it's like oh, I'll just yeah. let it grow. So I'm I'm so hey, I'm damn white, man. Yeah, yeah. I look I like Gary the Gary Mini Guy Gax. <laughs> Role playing with bald men. Yeah. <laughs> once I started counting, everybody was. <laughs> Exactly. Well, this is, this is very tangential, and then we have to get back on subject. But yeah. years yeah. and years and years ago, one of my first bands, we were like really like popular in New Haven. We were called Uncle John's Jug Band. It was crazy. Oh, but we, we were like back in like the early '80s. We were we were you know really popular, yeah. and um, we were talking about like all of our dads. You know, for most of them were like we're bald and stuff like that. And it's like, what are we going to call ourselves years from now? And we decided we were really like. So, 
something in the Butcher's Wax trio, because there's three of us, and right. now the three of us are, are like ball, cue balls, and that we're actually thinking amazing. of putting something together. And I'd love to call it the Butcher's Wax trio, because why the heck not? <laughs> that is perfect. But, That's yeah. perfect. But anyhow. So yeah, I, so back... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead. Uh, no, but I, I think I was looking back at our thing. I think we were, we were talking about this, you know, uh, I was talking about my experience on my channel with a with the Call of Cthulhu game with Anthony when we first started playing it. Right. And he's he's actually several episodes behind in terms of what he's released. He's got a backlog right. of stuff because some of it's you know, it's it's been originally with, with me and then it was me and, and um and the guy that was playing um oh god, old man. <laughs> Brian? Uh well Brian Cortmonch was playing yeah. and then um then we had um the fellow that was playing um a uh, Callum McGinnis, okay. whose name will come to me in a second, who, who has a podcast of his own. And I mean, I feel really bad, not, you know, <laughs> but, um, but like, cause I originally, I, I told Anthony one time as we we're chatting one time, I was like, you know what? I've never actually played the original Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, you know, if you ever um, yeah. think of running that and he says, yeah, sure. I'll run it. And I said, actually, I've, I got a sixth edition here that this guy, you know, Jose had given me. Yeah. And he said, sure, that'll be great. Let's, let's do it. Okay. Um, now, so then, is, then he started running. Sixth is like the uh, Holy Grail of Call of Cthulhu. Is that, is I, that... well? Um, I w if you ask Anthony, it would probably be four. Four. That's the, the okay. That's the other one that, I'm thinking of. Right. Yeah, okay. the rules aren't all that different. I mean, seven is where it really changed dramatically okay. and became a different became a different game because of reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but you know this this one uh, you know so, so I he said give me your you know fire at me with both barrels you've done yeah. this for like decades yeah so give me the give me the you know the anthony Cole of cthulhu experience and nice. it's been a blast you know oh yeah i've been watching i can't watch all of them but i try to watch uh, when i can and uh they're definitely um engaging there's no doubt about it and they're very easy to follow very easy to watch and i think that's because it's about characters not about dice not about system yeah you know i mean i was i was talking to him <clears throat> recently and he mentioned that you know he actually was did a session with Craig from Third Floor Wars the other yeah. day. So he's literally got you know Brian, Brian Gregory, you yeah. know the stochastic yeah. agency. Like in one in one year, we have, have our paths have not crossed. Yeah. You know he's got you know me and, and Brian Cortmanch and um, you know um, we haven't been joined by the other fellow in a while. But like in this other area, okay. And then he's playing with um, he did a session for um, for uh, Third Floor Wars, you yeah. know, and so. Um, he said, this is really cool. I haven't done this in a long time. You know, yeah. this is what I really like to do is have like various people in the same area. Um, and I was thinking about it and I asked him, I didn't get an answer yet, you know, but one yeah. of the things I, you know, I said, is that, do you like doing that? Because it's a little bit like real life. In other yeah. words, like a thing happens right, right? in real life. All the people that are affected by that thing aren't like all together. You, okay. you, you, you know, you split the party. The party's already split. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes the things that these people do may cross each other. Sometimes they won't. Right. Um, right. But like it's it's each person's experience. And you know what? To me, and this is just you know coming from my perspective, having played it so, so far and watching the other games, is is it's the a lot of times when we have a campaign or we run a game or something like that, the game is about several things. Mm -hmm. It could be just about the thing. It could be just this right. campaign, and we're going to play against the giants, and you know, or whatever the hell it is. Right. Um, right. It could be just about the characters. Right. You know, here it's kind of about both. It's you know each individual session. It's about how Terrence McSweeney deals with yeah. uh, coming face to face with stuff that's so horrible and so inexplicable. Right. What does he do with this? Right. Uh, and, but then it's also about Brian Gregory's character. How yes. how does he handle yes. coming up against this? Which is um, so it's kind of like there's a if you pull way back, mm -hmm. it's kind of about the thing, whatever the hell the thing is that Anthony's got going on. Which right. Is, you know, pre, right. Pre, but you, you zoom into each individual session. It's about that character kind of. Well, and that's, to me, that is what all good literature, television, movies do. It's about the people and the conflicts. It's not about the thing. The thing, of course, we care about because the character cares about it. So if I'm watching McSweeney deal with the thing, I don't have to care about the thing, but I'm watching McSweeney. So if I care about McSweeney, I care about the thing, right? That right. is good literature. That is good film. That is good that is good movie making, right? It's about the people. And then, you know, we don't give a shit about the ring. Frodo does. So we give a, we, we, we care about yeah. Frodo. We don't really right. care about the ring itself, right? It's just a thing. But, so it's been very engaging. And Adele turned him on to, because I hadn't been paying attention to, you know, at all. And so he, I, I, he would send me links. He got to watch these. So I was trying to catch up to him. And fantastic. Yeah, really good stuff. Yeah. Dale had a couple I, of questions, watched. too, I think, about it. 
you know, I was just going to say I'd watched uh, uh, up until recently uh, Ivan with you and Smalls. I can't remember the the yeah the character. Yeah, he's an excellent role player. And mm -hmm. I love watching y'all go at it. But he uh, Anthony commented because I made a comment uh, and he said that that session that y'all were in, like Brian Gregory's session, like right. y'all passed like right. within an hour of each other. Right. Yeah, that was, so, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that that that's really cool. But this it's, it's been enjoying watching y'all uh, delve into character. You know, yeah, I did have the close that. the closest I've gotten to that, and this is a tangent for one second, is during yeah. Lamentations in Prussia, mm -hmm. Jason may or may or not may or may not have released a whole bunch of demons that were imprisoned <laughs> by a bunch of wards. I was running another uh, game of Lamentations in England, mm -hmm. and there was a moment where these things like whiz by and like destroyed a couple of things. And those were that. Yeah, that was, right, that was right. so that was fun. So I mean, it was fun to be able to. There was a you know, uh, there was a consistency cross. to the world crossing different right. groups. Yeah, it's it's right. a new phenomenon for me because our game itself, Dark Age of Man, was designed so you could have characters all together at the same session, completely doing different things in different areas of the world, and all of it seamlessly worked together. And that's what happened with Brian and Dell and uh, uh, Sam in our Dark Age of uh, Chronicles. It was just all happening in the same session. But that's a new phenomenon for me. As you know, Ivan, we're old school guys, and you don't break the party, right? Never break the party. So yeah. you have to have a game system that does that, a game that supports separate character. Yeah, it's, it's, either, a game, it's either a game or, like, a group of people that are cool with it. Like, I mean, I... True, that's true. I am, uh, I am absolutely, you know, fine with, like, if, if, we are, if we're in different spots. Right. Um, like, this, this last... There's a session that's not aired yet. And I think we're, we're like, we're actually, we're, um, there's a part where like, there's no way that our characters are going to be together. We already know that they've kind of split at this point. And uh, initially, you know, there was a bit of a, a hiccup, like, you know, Brian uh, Courtmunch can join us until a little bit later. So half of the session, or a good chunk of the session is just me. And then he shows up. Um, but I told, I was talking, I was like, listen, if it turns out that like I have to sit there and just watch Brian role play for half an hour <laughs> to catch to up or to, I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it because yeah. it, it doesn't bother me. I mean, so I, I yeah. like that. It, it's never it's never bothered me, but it, you know, maybe maybe back when I was a kid or younger. But sure. I'm totally into like if the if the party is split. I you know, right. we had a lot of that happen in Alien too, where my character was literally unable to do anything. Oh. and I was like, no, no, guys, go go do the yeah, thing. Exactly. And like every yeah. once in a while, I'd be you know, I'd be you know, yeah. it, it, uh, you know, uh, moving about in a scene as best I could. But right, right. That's stuff, that's. that's that, to be honest, I think that is part of the atmosphere of the... I mean, even in the uh, game David ran for us, it was 45 minutes before I even introduced my character to the session. So they had played for 45 minutes before I was even involved, and I was happy to take the time to watch it develop, right? Right. So, um, although my character wasn't necessarily involved with them, so, uh, you know, part of it is digging the role-playing from other perspectives, too. So, right. um, so getting to uh, in-character play, I was just going to ask you, so... Uh, so define in character play. What's your definition of in character play? <laughs> All right, I'll give it. I'll give it my best try. And I don't want to forget the sanity stuff because I know that's originally what. Yeah. We do, well, I'm gonna. Know, that right? actually, all that. of these questions are leading up to sanity. Matter of fact, okay. my third okay. question is about sanity. <laughs> at some point. Okay. So, so point, I have. Yeah, I have yeah. a. I have a track with in character to sanity. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I've had a million discussions about about this with you, a lot with Anthony, a lot with Anthony and Aloy, a lot with you know a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Um, and Anthony really, without stealing his thunder, because I don't know how much he's shared these terms, you know, he really started talking about in character as character, mm -hmm. and then talking about other things like in character as player, and then you know, in character as author, and out of character as mm -hmm. blah blah blah. You know, it goes on mm -hmm. and on. But um, so I think it focused on like in character as character, mm -hmm. um, because that's what seems to be the most comfortable for me. That's where it seems like I'm, I'm having the most. It's the least like work. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, you know, like I, right. all of a sudden the time goes by. Um, so in character as character means to you, uh, you process everything from the character's perspective? Yeah. I mean, the majority of what I'm doing or what's happening is, you know, like say in Call of Cthulhu, I'm imagining myself, well, I'm Terrence McSweeney. Yeah. I'm this guy with, right. his, with his flaws, with his motivations, mm -hmm. you know, with his whole personality, with his financial resources, with his, you know, abrasive personality 
you know, so a lot of which developed during play too, which, right. you know, we can talk about, but yeah, you know, I have but, um, but about I'm, that too. Yeah, so right. we're on but the same I'm, page. You know, so I'm making decisions, you know, like when I said that it was really kind of cool that like in this Call of Cthulhu camp, hold on for one second, mm-hmm. in this Call of Camp Cthulhu campaign, I think I had to re, uh, sorry, I had to reject a phone call, which That's I think okay. flips to my iPad. Um, in this Call of Cthulhu game, the, um, the individual sessions are about like the character in that situation. Mm-hmm. So very much, you know, I'm, t- I'm this guy, I'm this character. I'm playing the part of this character. Well, I'm making decisions from the perspective of this character. Mm-hmm. What would this character do in this situation? Mm-hmm. Um, how does this character feel in this situation? Mm-hmm. All those, all those sorts of things. And it becomes, you know, at least for me, because I like it, it mm-hmm. becomes really, really easy to put myself in that place. Right. And so I'm making the decisions from the standpoint of what that character would do. I mean, I, I would disagree or I would disagree a little bit with you in your, your one of your videos you made sure. in terms of just first person stuff. To me, first person, not only saying what Terrence McQueen says, but then saying, well, I walk over there. Okay. I have to say it because if I stood up and walked over there, we'd be larking. That's right. You know, that's but you're if right. I say, no, that's you know, exactly right. right. I don't disagree but, with but that. But if I say, if I say Terrence McSweeney stands up and he, he moves up, well, now I'm in the third person. Right. You know. Um, right. Yeah. No. But, and so see, I'm that's what's fascinating things. to me because when I played in Lamentations, uh, mm-hmm. and this is why early, because I was never a player. I, was, I, I first really got a chance to play seriously with you. And right. I only play from in-character perspective. I'd never cross my mind to play my character like he could die any minute in Lamentations. Right. So it was always a shock to me when people were like, well, you know, that's it. that's how I play. And I've right. actually been a pain in the ass to players playing old school because I'm playing from my character's perspective, which is dangerous, right? Right. right. And I've had to and, learn, and I, I've actually yeah. had to learn that recently, right? That I'm not <laughs> I'm actually not doing them any favors by being in character. Right. Right. And it, it depends. I mean, well, I mean, I, I remember thinking about that when I was watching your video and it mm-hmm. made me think of um, when I when I played when I first started playing BRP with Anthony and was played by Post. Right. Uh, you know, basic role playing. It was a different uh, it was it was our Mythos Mithras game, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The thing was, I'm in this situation, you know, my character's in this situation, you know, where I'm, I'm sitting across the table from this very large Asian gentleman who wants something that we've stolen back. You know, we, we're like archaeologists, you know, we're like Indiana Jones types of, um, to a certain extent. And so I've got this urn, you know, and he wants the urn back. You know, my employer wants, there's a big, you know, 300 pound gorilla of a guy. Right. Now, if I was playing Ubiquity, I would have tossed the, you know, I would have like, you know, tossed the urn out or tossed the ashes out or say, say, here, catch, you know, because I've got the <laughs> golden thing. That I, and then now, because the because the physics of that world mm-hmm. support doing that. Right. It's very unlike. I mean, I, it, it, you can get hurt. However, I can spend style. I can do all these things. I can, you know, right. my, because we were playing BRP. Even though it crossed my mind for a second, yeah. I didn't do this because my it's in character both ways. Yes. My character knows this guy will kill me. Right. There's no way I'm getting out of here in time. And if I throw the urn at this guy, you know, the people that hired me to get this thing are going to kill me. Yeah. It's die either way, you know. Right. So, right. Um, because to, f- it, to a very real extent, physics works differently. Right. Right. You know. So it's yeah, so still you're, it's you're, still you're in character. character. You're making in character decisions, but you're conscious of the actual game system mechanics to some degree. Yeah, and yeah. it's. I mean, so I mean, like you. you you can make an argument. Well, how much of this is you as a player making that, or like in right. character as player? Some, but I, you know, I like to. I thought about it a lot, and I like to think of it as that at that point, I know, like mm-hmm. you know, has had if I as Ivan lived in a world where I could, you know, um, I could do that shit and get away with it, I would. <laughs> yeah. But then the <laughs> physics of the world would be ubiquity physics. I would be Indiana Jones. I'd right. be, you know, like. Right. I'd be jumping on somebody's car. And be like, I can't do that, kids. No, right, <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, well, well, and, 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 and most people in reality can't, right? I mean, that's right. that's movie stuff. But, but but the reality is, yeah, high adventure. You know, Hollow Earth to me is high adventure. You're supposed to do that in Hollow Earth, right? I mean, it's it's kind of right. it's kind of uh, the genre, right? In Hollow Earth, part Wars of the genre. Too. Yeah. So Mithras, the other... I would think the genre of, the, of Mithras it was a little different. Even the uh, the entire, just the whole atmosphere and the genre yeah. of, of the of the meeting, so to speak, right? Yeah. So the f- physics are physics are different, you know. So be, so because of that, 
the perspective of the character is a little different, you know, sure. because you sure. know he, he's not he's not living in he's not Wiley e. Coyote. He's not living in a world where he can just like fall off a cliff and then say, "Well, that sucked," and then get back up and chase a robot right, right. again, or so, or you know, right. to be to be ridiculous. So about again, it. so being in character for you uh, can happen in any system. Your your yeah. in, you're in character play is not informed by the mechanics or the system. It can be. There are a lot of mechanics that can disrupt it. Okay. You know there are you know. There are there are mechanics or procedures which can take me out of the place that I want to be mm -hmm. and make it diff more difficult to stay there. Right. You know, I found that when we played the Veil, for for instance, which is a Powered by the Apocalypse type game, mm -hmm. the, the decisions you had to make were as as a character, worse or as a player were so informed by that system. Sometimes you had to yeah. stop everything yeah. and and do so. it was fun. Yeah. But it was harder to maintain being in character. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got to the point with ubiquity, like I can spend style and not think about it, and yeah. I can just, you know, and it's it's not as disruptive. Right. But um, there were there were other games like I mean I really like playing Star Wars, you know, the uh, Fantasy yeah. Flight version. Yeah. But because I just hadn't played it enough, I'd have to stop when I was like, you know, look, I've got these advantages now. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right. We have to. We have hold to, on, hold on, guys. I got We have know, to process the information. Yeah, and you Whereas, can't. It's hard to do that in character, right? You got to kind of you, you're you you go from one headspace to now I've, I'm live right here, di dissecting or translating is a better term, right. translating the dice, right? Right. Yeah. The other, the other part that like you know, not to hog the mic for a second, but I'm gonna. The other part where well, you, you know, what, that, we're having in, you on here to talk, man. So the other part for me that's like important, or is an important distinction of like being in character, mm -hmm. um, as character, you know, was really summed up for me like when I played Circle of Hands and I'm in this one scene which has gotten talked to death where I'm playing the character of Ingolf you know and he's just he's in this you know opulent you know place the people down the base of the mountain are starving he's there with this guy that's a really kind of a prick um, and I'm in this you know in this big room and there's a stained glass window he's I've just given me this flagon of stuff to drink and you know I'm there to beg for help and right. this guy is being a real jerk and you know it would be great this, you know, there's this moment where I'm thinking to myself, I could just toss this this flagon right through that stained glass window and say, "Let's go do it right now, you and I." You know, <laughs> and you know, but the thing is, from a as a player, like, wouldn't that be cool moment? Mm -hmm. And wouldn't that be dramatic? Mm -hmm. That's a great decision to make. You know, that'd be sure. awesome. Sure. However, you know, and I, that thought crossed my mind for a second, right? right. But it's like it's not what Engel would do. That's not what he was there for. Right. He's he he kind of wants to kill this guy. He definitely wants to kill the guy. But he's right. like, this is not going to get anybody fed. Right. That's not why I'm here. Right. And it was interesting talking to the designer of the game when you know, you know, I said I you know I I didn't make the decision um, to do the most dramatic thing because you know I wanted to do instead of what the character would do. And he's I quit. There's no difference. And to me, it's like oh no, there is. You know, there's definitely a difference. You know. Different. So he said, different, "There's no yeah. difference." That's interesting. Yeah, but I, that's I, interesting because I find yeah. myself refraining uh, from a character's perspective. Uh, I will process again. Same thing. That's not what this guy would do right here. So right. I, I have to kind of check myself, and I'll, and I'll suffer frustration as a player, and I'll also suffer frustration as a character. So that's that's where I have sometimes problems in sessions. Right. I. I can suffer frustration with the game mechanics as a player that there's nothing there for me to use right. to impart my character upon the actual device of the game. And that frustrates me, that it doesn't exist. The mechanics don't exist for me to actually express my character properly. And then sometimes I'll just suffer frustration in character from the actual events that are occurring, right? which would make sense because my character's frustrated. Right. But... Um, and this, this very often happens in something like D&D where there's only so many mechanics, right? The procedures of combat, and that's it. There's really no other procedures. <laughs> I right, mean, right. there is nothing else that really empowers me to to take, let's say, control of the scene. It could it, You could call it a reaction check or a charisma check if my character expresses himself as a bully. or, But right. there's no rule there that the DM can, even has to pay attention to it, right? The DM can just say, you know, it's just ignore you right so I've had those kind of frustrations too that there's not some mechanic that I can call into play that changes the scene right so uh, and I think I experienced those from both in character and as player 
but I'm not certain. I'm not certain um, what's the most frustrating for me. I think when the mechanics, right. probably when the mechanics aren't there, I tend to just roll with whatever the game demands of me. So D and D just doesn't ask those things of me very often. Right. Right. That makes like sense. if you remember in Prussia, when I uh, when I wanted to intimidate the the guy I was interrogating, and I smacked him in the head with a book in the library. Remember, I yeah. kept right. Yeah. I had to trust you. To, to make a mechanic out of that because there is no rule for me to actually intimidate or you see right. what I'm saying? I think I, I, think had, I probably use a reaction roll or something like that. Yeah, sure. Think, okay, well, this is... And, and you're trusting that your GM gets what you're trying to impart, right, without there being an actual system of mechanics to support intimidation, so to speak. So it worked. But I've been at tables where, because it, there isn't a system like that, the GM will ignore that or just role play it out where there's no actual change in the scene. I can't actually affect the scene outside of role play, which to me can be very frustrating as a character, right? Because I want I want when I speak or the dialogue as a character or the motivations I have to somehow affect play. And sometimes if right. there's no mechanics, it's it, it is it falls on deaf ears, right? Yeah, so you know it's funny because sometimes there's so much of that that's behind the curtain. Right. So you're not sure is the game master making this decision because of what right. I've done or not. Right. Uh, which was which was really fun. you know it was, really, it was fine. Remember, like when you first started playing Prussian, we had a lot of discussions about like, dude, why'd you make that decision? Right. Because sure. it's pro it's probably what you would have done if you were running it. But oh now sure, it's like, absolutely, dude. Yeah. What do you, you know? But but it's yeah. kind of funny because one of the things that Anthony has talked about in this Call of Cthulhu game, mm -hmm. he'll put up those will be that little foghorn, like a little little you know yeah. blip will come up on the screen. There's plenty of times when we have done things and he hasn't we haven't rolled dice. But the mechanic is still invoked because you know wow. BRP, you know, is, is very clear on like, it, you know, that like there's a lot of times that like if the character has time, mm -hmm. if they have a skill of like you know at least this much, they're that competent. Mm -hmm. and, unless there's some you know, so if you're gonna like do some kind of library skill, or if you're gonna try to convince this person, and you've got lots of time and your argument's pretty good, then you know, yeah. there's lots of times that just hand wave it. Yes, that works because, mm -hmm. but it's not just hand waving it like for. The sake of hand waving, right? It's like right. yeah, the system backs yeah, it us support, up. So. Something supports it, right? Something in the but, system supports the logic that yeah. Works. But you know, right? Yeah, he didn't say. And now I shall wave the roll because you know, <laughs> it, you know. Yeah, which would suck if you're in character play, right? It, right, and so that's <laughs> all, you know, I think why. But it's it's cool to see afterwards those moments where it's like this is this is what happened here. This is right. what happened here. Okay, and which I think is, what I, I think is pretty cool. Dale, you have something to say on this? Yeah, I get, just kind of listening to you, uh, Ivan, when you were talking about playing from kind of a your definition of playing in character, like character motivation, as well as like sometimes you said you do, you understand and come to the understanding of the character, uh, and I know I'm kind of paraphrasing, as you play, through play. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which yeah, me, this reminded me. me of something that, that I had said to, to Sophie whenever we was having a conversation back recently or a week or two ago or whatever, and... Uh, kind of came to a recognition that she likes fully formed characters at the onset. Otherwise, how could you play your character, right? When I've literally had people roll me up a character and then jump right into the suit because the fun thing is discovering what discovering. this character is. Yeah. But this this made me think about the the like when you're when you're trying to express character or know that motivation which you're pointed to. Like to her point, she wanted to know what motivates the character. To like when you 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 get, were giving pause and say I wanted to do this but no my character wouldn't because you felt that was where his he was grounded at or that was his mm -hmm. point of view that you were trying to identify with and emote as that character. Um, there are certain games uh, like especially in our game or various other games where uh, you know even a traditional D and D you don't have that character backlog. Right. But then there are the things that inform you, like when we're playing Traveler and Jason loved the fact that he could look back on his character oh, yeah. and say, well, I had been in jail, I had did this, yeah. I did that. And it gives you a lot of information to kind of fill in those blanks and kind of feed you as to how you might, he might interpret something yeah. in the present. Oh, I stepped into you know, those his, Traveler. His I stepped into that Traveler game uh, already a 40 year old man and had a, I just knew who this guy was. I obviously didn't know how he was going to deal with the, the future. I didn't know how he was going to deal with the next crazy thing that he would encounter in his life or his partners. But Traveler definitely gave me a role play headspace in IC. I mean, I started that those sessions just completely in character, which yeah. again was new for me because I'd only ever played D20 basically 
which says don't waste your time because you probably won't survive. You know, you're probably not going to survive yet to worry about it. I remember in Prussia, I'll remember the first session and we had a, a brief encounter and I remember thinking, oh, fuck, here goes my character. He won't, he'll be dead here. And I remember thinking, how the hell did we survive that? You know, and then it's like, wait a minute, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to have to think about where Jürgen is going and what Jürgen's about because he was oh, yeah. surviving. You know, that fuck, I've actually got to think about who, who Jürgen is as I'm playing. I had to I, I, learn I just who Jürgen was. That again. I, and, I was just started watching session one again, and it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm dying. Yeah, and it is. It is. And for me, it was uh, watershed because normally you don't live long enough to even sweat it, right? And I hate to say that. Right. And I know there are people who will say, yeah, we don't have those experiences. Well, again. Cervantes. All I got to say is Cervantes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right, right, right. Twice. Open the door. Dead. <laughs> yeah, he was dead in the first goblin roll, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And D died. that's died old school. Door. That's straight up the way the game, whether you like it or not, that if you just play the game as the game is designed, that's unfortunately going to be, but you don't have to, right? You can, you right. can, you can, you can tweak that thing. You can homebrew that thing. You can make the game more about people and less about conflict, right? So I get it. But that, that was an experience where I realized, wow, you know, uh, but again, I had not had the luxury of playing in character in any other game system prior to that. So I was, I was, really, I was really having an opportunity. I mean, I'd done a little DC universe with some guys, uh, uh, but I can't remember. Uh, I, I played a superhero in that, but I can't remember much about it. We only played two or three sessions. But anyway, um, so let's, let me ask you this then, because you've really you've answered two of the first two. Define IC. What is IC in character play? You just did uh, that, right? Can I can I interrupt one for a second? Yes, please. And call yeah, please. I'm gonna I'm gonna call I'm gonna call. Then I know exactly what you're gonna ask me next. Don't forget. I yeah. call shenanigans though to, to a certain extent. Not okay. not on you. Yeah. But to me, it's like it's been, been in my experience that a character doesn't have to show up fully formed to be for you to be able to play them in character. Oh, and be God, yeah. I mean, like we're like we're human beings. Yeah. We understand motivations. You know. Yeah. I don't want to die. Yeah. So this guy. Yeah. So you you, you there's basic things this person wants. Um. And this this is true on both sides of the screen. Like mm -hmm. I have a lot of fun playing NPCs as a game master. Yeah. The more I get to play them, the more these people kind of come alive. Yeah, right. And start to really develop some personality. That's right. That's and right. you know, which is really you know, uh, especially their repeat characters. Yeah. Um, you know, but I can think of like God, you know, like playing Lamentations of the Flame Princess for the first time. Wait, you know, with Joe the Attorney, Joe the Lawyer, who yeah. I believe is has got a podcast now. Wow. Um, you know, my, my, you know, I'd play this wizard who was creatively named, you know, uh, Duras, I like a Star Trek, you know, villain, you know. Um, and I knew he was kind of a jerk starting, but he became more and more, as time went on, he was a really dark character, like not a nice guy at all. You right, know? right. Um, but, but you don't set out. You didn't set out yeah. with that as a goal. He, he, he evolved into that. Yeah, yeah, he was already a bit of a jerk, but he became a real jerk. Right. Know? But, you know, I, I think as you know, I've started most characters with at least some kind of motivation. It doesn't doesn't be a lot. Yeah. You know what 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 are they doing here? What, yeah. what, maybe what do they like a little bit? And this this comes kind of naturally anyway. Um, and some games really help with that, give you like a lot more stuff. Oh yeah. But, you know, yeah. but I started Leo Baxter and Aliens the same. You know, an Alien the same way. It was like I got some idea of who this guy is. Mm -hmm. um, but then the character really started to coalesce through play. And sometimes it's, you're just riffing off the other characters. Yeah. Yeah. And what what's the dynamic between them? Mm -hmm. And all that kind of stuff, and then all of a sudden, this this character starts to take a lot more shape. Right. So, you know, I believe that you can you can make those you can be in character as a character very fast, mm -hmm. and then you you start to discover them. And yeah, sure, there yeah. some of my characters may have similarities because we tend to like reach for the same things, or sure, maybe right, they're expressions yeah. of our own personality. Who, whoever, whatever, you can go right, down that rabbit right. hole forever. Right. But um, I've always found it to be pretty easy. The you know, there's different. Things that people like when they play. So people like people like you know, Sophie may want more of an experience where there's there's this person already, and the the game the game is going to be about their motivation. It's going to be about their arcs. It's going right, to be about these right. things. It's going to focus on that. Right. I don't care about that. Right. What I care about is the decisions they make. Like that's it. here's this yeah. guy in this situation. What does he do now? Yeah, that's it. Well, and and I want to experience from that perspective best I can. So for me, the most rewarding role playing for me is experiencing the character through these experiences that he's having. 
So I don't know who Jur Jurgen really is. I only know what he's kind of what I formulated and where he's coming from. Bag on his back, full, with a head of his buddy in the back. You know, he's got a goal. I want to talk to my buddy. I got to find out where the thing is. I brought that. That was about all I thought about Jurgen, right? But as we played, I discovered Jurgen's frustration with his with his God and throughout his. You know, I I wanted to experience Prussia, but I but Jurgen actually manifests itself through these. You know, in, in a way, I, I'm develop I'm de I'm discovering the character through in character play, as right. opposed now, to as opposed to knowing. Like a screenplay, you know, we, uh, you know, a screenplay generally in a, in a movie or, or there's an arc. The character will go through this process, and something's going to happen to change the character, or not. If the character doesn't change, something else has to change. But mostly, there's going to be a period where the character actually has a pivot point, a turning point. If not, nothing ever is actually. Uh, there's no closure in those 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 stories. But that's knowing the characters where he's from, where he's coming from, and where he's going to be. And I don't know how you can play a live game play to find out and know your character is going to end up more evil than he started or or more nice than he started or more greedy yeah, than he started. Yeah, I think... That's not play to find out. Yeah, I, th I think if we had been playing like with a different intention from the bat, I would have pushed, like maybe it would have been like more like a burning wheel thing. I would have pushed on Jurgen's religious thing and like right. the crisis of faith and that's... Right. I would have kept on pushing and pushing and pushing on that. Yeah. Now, yes, in... in uh, in Dark Age of Man, I may I'm I'm like ribbing Jim a little bit, yeah. and I'm like, wow, that's a nice cross. I think it'd be a sin to steal. Just I'm, I'm goofing yeah. around. That's different. Yeah. But if yeah. it was really going to be about like this, you know, this crisis of faith thing, then it would be a, it would be serious business. Right. Right. But yeah. So that's well, the you almost for me. you almost have to leave that up to Jim whether he has when when a, when a something arises in front of Jim's right. character that would give him a crisis of faith. Uh, right. Faith, excuse me, if it's something like watching Christians murder pagans. Right. How exactly. would Jim? Exactly. How would Jim react to seeing his brother and murdering pagans? You know, there right. there comes a crisis of faith. What the hell are you doing? You know, but exactly. But, if, but if that's it, that's going to man itself yeah. through through show don't tell. Right. You're going to show him right. something that might make him think twice about being a Christian. Right. Or at right. least about has, his cohorts. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and if Dark Age of Man was a game where that was what was supposed to happen, right. then I would totally be pushing that's against exactly him right. like that. Yeah. But it's it's definitely it's not. No, you know, no, it's, that it's about it's about his character pursuit. I could write. Yeah. I could put that like number 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 five is on the RSC is like you know some, you know Christians murdering pagans you exclamation can. mark and, you know and then it might happen but that, yeah, that would be see, like oh, and just see how Jim handles that situation <laughs> that becomes a conflict that that would affect Jim more than say Dunstan or. Right. right. However, Dunstan and them might just not like the fact that they're murdering anybody. Right? What the hell are you doing, right. killing people? At uh, all? So I was, right. I was be like, ah, oh, they deserve, probably deserved it. <laughs> loot, the, loot the bodies. All right. So, we'll, so, we'll, 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 so, so just a little um, question about your show. Don't tell because one hundred percent on that. But how much do you think that that weighs in character portrayal? Uh, you know, because whenever you're playing across the table and with you know the the presenter or GM or whatever the case is. And you're showing the character just through whether you're third person dialogue and explaining what you're doing or your your in character monologue without you know, I mean, we all put that little thing on the side and this is what I'm intending to do. You know what I mean? Right. But uh as far as the uh amount of of in character expression, like what's the importance or how much do you value that expression that the player has to it to bring to it because I mean that's I I think maybe I'm expressing myself right. Mm -hmm. It's just the the amount of uh, the amount of ability as a player to express themselves mm -hmm. without necessarily like in in the dialogue without pointing a big arrow to this is what <laughs> right. I'm gonna do. You well, know, as far as like right. sitting back and this is what I'm attempting to do. But you have that in character dialogue and interplay and everything like that can that can be subtle and affect things in ways like because we're we're trying to build more than flat 2D characters. Right. We're right. trying to build a a whole round character and that that has subtly complex mm -hmm. you know things that you go back and forth with like these crises of faith that we're talking about i know when we were playing i was playing uh that viking mm -hmm. that had been trying to be christianized that mm -hmm. was following sylvester brian's character and it was a revelation to him because he didn't say during play 
what he was, what his affiliation was, mm -hmm. religious or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And there right. was a moment when he did something that kind of like set off this light bulb explosion mm -hmm. in my character. So, I mean, we were playing these, you know, we were even holding the, our hands behind right. ourselves in play, even as players. So we had to interact subtly and just with yeah. dialogue. Yeah. With yeah, I mean, Brian, Brian walked a fine line. Brian was very, uh, very good in that game in that he never explicitly said, my character's about paganism. or Brian just played like a, it was, it was fascinating. And Brian, uh, Gregory, Gregory, sorry. Oh, right on. Okay, yeah, yeah, awesome. uh, and the, the way he, the way he played that character, and you knew as you were playing that he was fully in in character, fully vested in who this human being was, but never did Brian feel he compelled to say, well, he's pagan or he's Christian or he's, and I think that led to some very fascinating encounters oh, it was, between it was... Dell's character, who was in a crisis of, of a pagan turning Christian, so to speak. Right, uh, and of course Sam playing a, a an absolute Christian miracle maker. I mean the guy well, was, the guy made bread and wine for the for that's the hilarious, story, right? And so what, he was actually doing was, miracles in the streets, right? So it was what it was, was interesting. Made, what was interesting is that even even you know in the game when Sam actually because he's a protagonist, but he made his own antagonist, which is you yeah. know it's a direct reflection of what you aren't. Yeah. and what the character values. So he brought that to the table, which he can, because he villainized uh, Falcone. Yeah, he pushed hard against Falcone, and you, and you made you picked up on Falcone those cues. Into his arch, enemies, uh, arch enemy, right? And so yeah, I, you picked I up picked on up on it and, and said, "Okay, Falcone, he's a bad guy here," and it yeah. it, this, it allowed him to more, express his character fully. But it brought more gravitas to his character yeah, and the sure. whole situation. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, yeah. I digress. Don't yeah. mean to. <laughs> well, but it's, you bring true. Up a, it's true. You bring up a really good point. And uh, Joe Richter is the guy's name. I yeah. just remember from from from, from uh, that that's Cal No offense, Joe. Joe. We, we so, sorry, man. It's just it's just old man stuff. <laughs> yeah, old man stuff. He oh, just man. looks like, younger than me. Crazy. He's not. He's I'm the one that it's looks really old. He looks. <laughs> it was driving me crazy. I'll be 56 in uh, April, dude. So, dude, yeah. I'll be 50. Yeah, yeah 54. Yeah, it's amazing, brother. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you did bring up a good point, though, Dell. It's like the, the, the show don't tell stuff. If, you know, if you watch the, which I'm, I'm finding fascinating, and it's nothing against anybody. So anything, anything I say about the other players mm -hmm. is not like a dig on them at all. No, no. We are all so different in how we approach playing. Yeah. And it, we're still able to play together. Yes. But we have little, we have differences. And it's really wild to see, like, you know, um, like I am very, I always, you know, it, it, I was thinking, man, I must be really boring to watch because a lot of what's going on in my head never makes it out. I'm imagining wow. the scene. I'm imagining the. I'm imagining the. You know the. Uh, I'm feeling the like the, the uh, the struggles that the character is having. Yeah. Um, and you can't express it. I right? might. I might have. I might have some manner. Of, well, I don't necessarily want to. You right. know, it's, it's because right. I don't walk around. You know. That's true. Ta telling telling you about all these things. Well, Ivan's really kind of worried about this. You know, <laughs> not only really sure, and the finances are looking a little tough right now. And I'm not sure if I should. He's not sure if he should buy this or not. So the nar looks, the narcissist Ivan would, but not kinda, this you know, Ivan. He kind of. <laughs> he kind of looks at his, his clothes and decides maybe they'll last another another year, and so maybe. Now, but the thing is, the thing is. If you watch Brian Cormunch, yeah, he'll do that. He'll let you write into his head in and what the character's thinking. Right. You know, it, it goes back and forth. Right. If you watch, if you watch Brian Gregory, yeah. he'll do that too in a different way. Yes. Yes. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I won't least, lie. Least, least, I won't lie. Both Bryans yeah. are incredibly yeah. compelling to watch. I, oh, I, absolutely, dude. I don't know what it is, but they both have a they both have a magic to their how they express their character. It's really. Good. I can. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I can, you know, so I'm not describing as much stuff, but like, so they're really, you know, listening to them, especially in their solo sessions, man, it's a hoot. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. It's, it's like entertaining yeah. radio play. For and me listen, that it's like anything, right? I can, I can really appreciate what other people do that, that I don't do well. I don't, they don't have to be like right. me for me to go, holy shit, right. that guy's talented. Because yeah, if, I'm, I'm, if I thought Van Halen should play guitar as well as I, well, there would have been no yeah. Van Halen. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They yes, got to appreciate exactly. it. Right? And I love that. I like that we're all able to do this hobby, and we're all different. We're all going to be different about it. But I do think there are ways we can maximize, as I call it, uh, uh, the the pen penultimate uh, communication or the maximization of what the, the, the system's trying to get out of us, right? So 
Uh, right. Dale, did he did he answer your question there? Or you well, I, 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 yeah, I'm, yes. I'm always kind of like a chandelier with my thoughts out there. I, but, I think I'm more yeah, of a okay. shower. I, th I think the other day, yeah, I'm sh I'm, you know, yeah. Uh, I think I'm more of a shower rather than a teller. So, like, I mean, I will think through the actions of the character, what mm -hmm. the character says, sometimes tone of voice, sometimes mannerisms, yeah, uh, body language, all that kind of stuff. I'm I'm showing you, right. and it's not like, well, I have to show them, so I'll do this. That's just yeah. what I'm doing at that point. Whereas, you know, my friends will tell you more explicitly, yeah. and it's not like one's better than the other, but that's that's how they right. will convey you that information in that manner. And I'm Anthony not, and I have been playing certain. together long enough, so we, he kind of knows what I'm at. Yeah. You know, See, and I'm not certain point. I'm either. I think what happens is I, I get in situations where I feel like I have to communicate well. Right. And if I have to, I'll say what the intentions are. I mean, I'll actually say, oh, my intentions are to do this because I want to make sure the GM understands. My goal oh, yeah, I'll not, do that. My goal yeah. would be not to have to do it that way, but I'm, I'm always so paranoid about communicating that some, I mean, I will step out of character, I'll, I'll go that extra link if I feel like I'm not communicating. Ideally, yeah. you would like it to work um, without, uh, you know, a culture of play does this too. The more you play with Anthony, the more he gets you and you get him. So it just right. makes it just makes it that much easier for you the more and more experience you have together, right? Learning each other's, exactly. uh, you know, uh, method. Um, so I, I'm going to ask a question here about uh, how, are the, how are the experiences in the Call of Cthulhu heightening the experience if they are? And I think I think you've expressed that pretty well already so I'll ask you then the, the big one sanity what is the mechanic first of all I don't know the mechanic I'm not familiar with how it affects play and how is it informing your in-character play or is it informing your character play or are you just are you going straight in character and the sanity mechanic doesn't necessarily matter that's a good question okay. now, I I am definitely in the camp that like things like sanity mechanics and fear okay. mechanics and all those kind of things. I, I mean, a lot of my friends do not, and a lot right. of people do not because they're like, dude, you know, um, you know, because it's stepping into either agency, if you will. Yeah. Like this is going to make you know, I, I don't get to make all the decisions for my character now. Like some some part of my character, and it could it's the same in Alien. Yeah. It's just different. Right. There's that moment where like you know you lose your shit, right. and. Um, you know the the table tells you what happens now. You mm -hmm. know, do you you know? Um, and for me, it's the. Well, let me back up. Okay. So the situ the situation already, like the way things are being described, putting myself in the headspace of this event. Like I'm, you know, I'm walking into this building now, and and, and I'm seeing this horrible scene of murder, and I mean right. inexplicable murder, and there's. Um, so I've already kind of, you know, I'm in the headspace of the person actually going in to see that and, and feeling, you know, starting to feel that, you know, um, get that visceral reaction to this, or there's the foot in the wall, you know, what the hell is, you know, that, that right. kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. It looks like it was plat. So there's a part of me that's already kind of feeling that like eeriness mm -hmm. or that, that, that dis-ease, mm -hmm. um, in, in and it was wasn't that different in aliens. Like all of a sudden, things are getting really hairy, and yeah. you know we're, we're under a lot of stress. And right. you know I've done this thing, and now like my, I've hit this tipping point where I've gotten more stressed out. So at this point, like the mechanic gets invoked. Yeah, and the in mechanic, some way, shape, or form. So, so uh, know? the mechanic makes sense then in that situation. You're actually going, right. oh, of course, there's a there's a stress check here because I'm I, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, so I mean, Anthony, well, you know, like with Brian, he's been saying it's too much, but there's that moment where you've been com confronted with something that's so horrible mm -hmm. um, that it really tests somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm already in this headspace, already like, holy crap, this is nuts. You know, this is right. pretty awful. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, you don't have to be told how to feel. You're feeling it. How, you know, however, at that point, now that like, there's this analog, you know, okay, well, now we're all sanity. And, you know, Anthony's not, you know, despite the fact that he loves the game, he's not a fan of saying, okay, now we're all sanity or whatever, but, you know, um, and so you know you, you pass or fail, you know it's D you know it's D one hundred and your sanity your sanity ends up going down. Like if you if you fail, well you lose that many sanity points. Sanity points like you might lose two sanity points or four depending okay. on how awful the thing is. Right. One of the things that happens mechanically in that game is that in like if I've lost two sanity points, well now my sanity is sixty three. It's not. So the next time I make a check, mm -hmm. it's harder for me to pass. Right. Yeah. You because you're, you know, you're less sane. Yeah. It's a war of attrition. Of your sanity, right? You're going exactly. to lose sanity, <laughs> right? However, 
you know, and we, we talked about this, like, well, how do we conceive of this? You know, should I pass? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's like, like there's got to be an explanation for this. Correct. Or you're able to hold it together. Right. It's still, it still feels horrible. I'm still, like, say, right. in look, a shoe in the wall. Or I'm right. here with these with these murdered bodies, you know, right. like, just, you know, these bodies have been torn apart or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, but the, I can, like, well, this is a rational explanation. Or, okay, well, this is just, you know, just hold together. Mm-hmm. Still having that and it's interesting which I can you know? argue rationalizing the irrational is a version of insanity exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, true true but you know in that in that case and but if I if I lose it you know if I if I if I haven't passed it then it's then it informs in both cases it informs me like how how to play my character okay. it's not it's not removing it's not putting me into one box where I can only do one thing right you know right. But it is what what it is doing. It's informing me of how the choices I could make, or the the way I can express, you know, my character. It, and honestly, to me, it's a lot. It's not different from a, a game, say like Ubiquity, or any game with a death spiral, where if you if you lose a certain amount of health or hit points, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden you're worse at things. Yes, and it's hard, you know, and, and you're because once again in a game like that, people generally won't get upset about that. Mm-hmm. But that's that's restricting what you can do. Sure, it is. Absolutely. You're, 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 you know. Yeah. So to me, at this point, I, I like it because, and I'll back up and talk about two different ways that Anthony's expressed what's happened. Okay. You know, because a lot of what what he's done is talk about like physical reactions and your pulses. You know, you know, you can feel that. You know, you hear your blood pounding in your ears right, and all right. that kind of stuff, and you're dizzy or whatever. Um, if you watch Brian Gregory sessions recently, mm-hmm. you know Brian's opted to narrate that. So when so how he's signaling Anthony that he failed the sanity check is he starts narrating yeah, all right. these things happen. I'm when, sweating, palpitation. Right, 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 right exactly. Right. And uh, to me, I prefer that Anthony does it if I fail wow, because wow. And the th- the thing is, to me, that's for me, it's much more in character because we're not in control of those things. No, in real life, like if, you're if, right. if I you're get right. freaked yeah. out, you know, if I get freaked out, yeah. you know, and I and I walk in and I see something horrible, mm-hmm. you know, or you know, I look in and, and my credit cards, you know, somebody <laughs> drew, drew drew the wrong credit card, three thousand dollars, <laughs> and you have them all. Sure, oh, right, 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 right. Listen, I don't I don't make those reactions up. That's interesting. I don't I don't that's, say. And now I shall, you know, my heart will start pounding. I'm going to start to wonder how am I going to eat this, you know, or whatever. Yeah, that's to be. that is fascinating. It's a great those, point. Um, uh huh. But so I'm, more, to like, me it I'm feels... more like Brian. I would want right. to. I would. I would cue Anthony that I'm sweating and, you know, I'm right. starting to think. Uh, you know, yeah, right. That's know, interesting. Though, with in that. character, in character, to, to have me, that told to you, right? Yeah. To me, it feels much more in character to have those reactions. Uh-huh. You know, whether it's thoughts or emotion. I mean, and these are extreme cases. This isn't all the time. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. Okay. To have those things told to me because these are, in real life thoughts and reactions that I am manifestly not in control of. Yeah. Right. There's parts of my parts of my brain that do things that I have no control over. Right. And so to me it feels much more a character to have that told me. I'm like, yeah. oh man. So, you know. so you like the fight or flight coming from outside. You'd like someone else yeah. to express your fight or flight. Yeah. Yeah, in a way. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And abs- and, and some like that's a very um you know, um, game master, not directed, but the game master is telling me these things. Right. In aliens, on the other hand, I might just roll this thing. It's like you start to freak out, and when you yell, you're actually getting other people's stress. So when that would happen, that happened to me a lot for some reason. <laughs> you know, so then all of a sudden, Leo Baxter would start yelling, like, and he was kind of like, um, was it Hudson? Yeah. Right. In aliens. Right. It's like, oh man, game over. This is ridiculous, man. We're all going to die. It's you know. <laughs> and so the, the dice roll told me that that's an yeah. appropriate way to behave at that point. But like, Right. We've all, most of us have been in those situations where you get so panicked or so upset that sure. you start spouting off. Sure. sure. And, and and then you're like, man, I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, but, right. um, so, it's, it's funny game. because I'll be, be sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm about to play aliens after this uh, ourselves, but we're playing the colonization, which is kind of low key compared to the game that you right. had. You know what I mean? It's a slower. Burn, but until something rolling, horrible happens, until something horrible happens. Oh yeah, right, it, right, right, it, right. It, it it has already had a space hugger on on me. You know what I mean? It had to take it off. But there was one time when we, you know, the the, the food was uh, poisoned, and I just discovered this. 
right. and I was sitting there eating. So then I narrated, kind of pushing myself away from the sure. table and shaking and all this other stuff. And I've got a heart condition is what uh, what I have and taking this lingual medicine, trying you know, this trial stuff that I don't want to get caught taking. And this that's a scope that I I listen to my heart and calm down. So I just it just more or less prompts me to do something out of the way and get, go over to the side and calm down mm -hmm. more so, and then he reduces the stress some. So yeah, I wonder if that's exactly. And I don't know if that's just balancing thing, right? And I don't know if it's just player agency so much as player responsibility. I feel responsible for my character, but to, I, I that I should express to Anthony that I'm that that, that I when I roll if I were to fail a sanity check, I would feel compelled. Hey, I'm responsible for this. I've got to express this somehow, um, and that would yeah, be right. me pl as a player actually thinking about the game system not about in character responses right right and i think if you if you watch me mm -hmm. um and i haven't i haven't watched me very much i've usually listened i'm in the car but like right. I, I think i was watching a little bit of uh, my latest the latest session that anthony put up with me and and um and brian Cortmunch. there's moments where like I, I become very expressive like people have told me like i don't have a poker face like there's no, i mean in real life i just don't have one <laughs> and so i get myself in the you know a lot of times I don't have to tell you that like how freaked out I'm getting. I start to, to, you know, um, to show you just by, you know, right. by getting like a little freaked out, like, yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so I think that, in that way I express it. And, and it feels for something about that to me feels more natural because when I'm making those faces, when I'm, right. I can, it, it's easier for me to feel like, holy, you know, right. this is terrible, you know? Right. Right. And I'm a, I'm a hundred percent on board with you. I, I I don't like like I can play with black screens like we do a lot of times oh, and just listen yeah. to voices mm -hmm. and try to key in on that. But I'm getting so much more visual. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and, and you know, even if I don't, even if I, even watching back and going over Sam's game, same thing. I don't realize that my face. I mean, I'm giving away how I feel, and it's like, oh wow, you know, oh, wow. you you don't even realize that we do express so much. If you can see each other's face, you do express these things, right? Uh, some more yeah. than others, <laughs> right? Some right. more than others. Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's all these little little weird things and mannerisms that become part of the you know the character. Like we, we started a session, like I forget which one it was, and Brian Brian Cartman starts talking his normal voice rather than Alfred Small's voice. And you know, I'm like, Small's, what's wrong with your voice? You know, because it didn't, it wasn't Alfred Small's. But right. As soon as he started right. to, to talk like this, and I guess I'll. Uh, you make myself some eggs and tea and some I know toast you, you had to clamp down. Well, once on he him starts about doing that, like, he wants once to he eat himself. Once he starts doing that, yeah. Once he starts, I'm like, that's smalls. And then yeah. he makes different faces when he's making that. Yeah. And so, but it's become, it's like, oh, there's smalls. Yeah. And so I don't see Brian anymore. I'm like, I, I've got this picture in my head. Yeah. It, right. it comes yeah. with that voice. Which is know, awesome. Whole... Which is awesome. Yeah, I was watching him today, and it's like, this dude is just, you're just completely yeah. engaged. Yeah, but it comes with the faces too. It's not just if I just right. heard the voice, it wouldn't be the same thing. But I'm watching the whole right. thing in the body language, and he really does take on this, you know, persona. Like it's yeah. almost like watching ghosts when Whoopi Goldberg, like, right. like the, the ghost goes and also becomes somebody else. Yeah, He's it's, like it that. Is, uh, yeah, he really does embody the yeah. character. He really does. Right. It's it's amazing. Uh, so most of our my questions we've answered just through the conversation. But I've got another one here. Uh, so you sure. GM a lot of games, and you've GM'd many different games. As a GM, do you care whether players are IC, first person, or third person? How do you feel as a GM about how players come to the game? Um, or, or I should say play the game, participate in the game. I find it, I, I vastly prefer when they say I, when they, when they are talking in the first person. Mm -hmm. um, something about it, like when I play with the, you know, Various players, and like the kids in the library would vacillate an awful lot, and sometimes they were just talking about like he he does this, he does that. Um, but there's something about that that just um, I don't want to say rubs me the wrong way, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like um, they're there. And I don't, I don't, I mean, and there's people, and I don't mean the players aren't mentally there. It's like I I can't see the character as well as in when they right. say I, right. and when they start when they start, and there's definitely a lot of dialogue. Just something. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, you know, I haven't and, thought about that as a GM. Uh, that's fascinating. So you've actually given it thought. I mean, I asked this question, but I couldn't answer this question. Yeah, I, I the, just, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's like the characters, like, are much more present to me. 
right. when people are playing mm-hmm. in first person. Yeah. And I, so I, 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 think, I prefer it. You know? yeah. I think there's an immediacy too, and it's more of a disconnect whenever somebody like summarizes what they do. Right. You know, they're not there. Like you said, when you was walking in that game and you're walking into this horrible scene with all the bodies that were just torn apart like biscuits or the, you know, the dinner rolls, as, as Anthony said, you know, yeah. you're, you're there and you're seeing it. So there's an investment to it. And uh, like when you're saying the word I, I'm there and you're you're interacting, which calls back to what I was trying to say earlier, that immediacy of play. Yeah. Where a lot of people, if, they, if you just play where you're, where you're playing, just describing what you do as a summarization of what your intent is, mm-hmm. it, to me it's less, uh, there, there's, there's, it's where I disconnect. Yeah, well, there you know is what I mean? a disconnect. I'm not immersed, I'm not necessarily... Yeah. I, you know, I'm not engrossed mm-hmm. or engaged mm-hmm. in what is going on. I'm just here in this background. Like, this is what I do and that's right. what I do. But right. it's not, I'm not there in presence. And I think it's just more natural when you're sitting around with five other human beings and somebody foregoes the affectations that there's a difference between them and their character that's more engaging. It's more engaging when I just say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I believe this. or Because you're all looking at me and I'm playing a character. So if I go out of my way to say Jason walks over and picks up the jar, I'm going out of my way to go to the fourth wall. It's, I'm breaching the fourth wall in a way when I do that. Don't you think? And that's, I think it does I disengage. That, I, don't, I don't want to go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. It's like, it's one of those things that's, I, I have friends that like will flip back and forth. Yeah, know, and I probably he, do he and because I. I'm not, I don't really think about it, but I bet I do. But, um, yeah. You know, I don't find that it's, I don't want to say it's never jarring. It can be jarring sometimes, but it's, I far prefer that to just, he does this, he does that. Yeah. You know? um, and, you know, I just. Well, it, but does it feel like about, you're playing with kids with toys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it makes it, me think I'm playing with my, you know, Well, with I'm not sure who to look at at that point. You know, it's like, you know, because you don't, like I said, they don't have to have a lot of dogs. I have one guy that whenever we played with, he, he would hardly say, his character would hardly say anything. Mm-hmm. But I do this. I went there. I picked this up. I hit it with my sword. I yeah. and so you could see, you could look at him, and yeah. you know when when people say he, you know, you know, or Dobby, Dobby goes over here. And what yeah. you know, I'm right. like, well, where who, who should I look at? Because Dobby's not at the table. Where, <laughs> yeah. where is you know? Right. Right. You well, know, and it and is it, just, it is a direct, purposeful disconnection from the character. It is it is objectifying the character is what it's doing. Right. And I'm not certain that that's the most comfortable way for me to be icy, or at least be at a table. But I'm sure there are people who that's how they play, totally objectifying the, the character, right? Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's weird because, I mean, it doesn't, you know, as a game master, you, you're by necessity when you are playing the NPCs, yes. no matter how in character you get, yeah. you then say, well, he gets up and walks and does the thing. Yeah. You, know, you never say I. And that's, but for some reason, that doesn't bother me. Like, well, I don't, I don't because, feel disconnected that's from that because character. You're one, third that's, party description. that's because you're I mean, one human being depicting right. everything else. Right, we exactly. are one character depicting one character. What do you mean he? Right. You are he. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So but, I mean, yeah, you, you can't constantly stay yeah. in, in, in a mode like that. You've got to describe right. your actions and what you do, and then you stop, and then you, you, you talk as your character. Oh, yeah. or as not a game in a voice play. order. But, right. Right. As a game master for this, I say like I. I'm like, well, which I? Do you mean you mean Johnny or Jimmy? Like, which 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 NPC you're talking about? Right. So, right. You know, that would that. be a mess. That would be a, that would be a complete. But mess. like, haven't haven't said all that. Like, though, I mean, that's all my preference. That's all just like sure. what makes me feel yeah. more comfortable. Yeah, sure. Exactly. You know, for the for the players to to players to use I and be right. in the first person. Right. Um. Now that's yeah, it, you know. it, it's just interesting. We all have our our have our preferences. You know, but, you know, I, I just speak up sometimes when it, it aligns because it's fascinating to me. Like you said, everybody at the table, they they all play different and yeah. they all have their strengths and 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 comfort levels. And I, I don't know. It's fascinating to sit back and because I, I learned a lot from playing with you guys over the years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're trying, I'm in a constant state of trying to improve mm-hmm. and trying to see, you know, because nothing's nothing's perfect. Yeah, but, and, I, uh, and I kind of went through the, the new guy thing where. I was automatically I in the first person because I was new to being a player. Right. Um, and then it's like I started paying attention to tense and third person. For, and then it's like I regressed a little bit and started toying with other ways to communicate. Yeah. And now I'm kind of mixed, not mixed up, but now I think I tend to kind of get, I, I'm almost like more, um, 
I'm less good like sweet at just being in character now than I once was. And I think that's from all of the different experiences and all the different... And that's coming back to me now. Even even going back and playing these old D20 games, I find myself completely in character. However, I've finally adjusted that I can be completely in character, but also aware of the design intent of the game and that I have to I have to temper my character decisions with what's a smart decision for the game, right? So I don't get killed and I don't get my party members killed. So I've, I've learned now kind of to take it all in. So this 10 year process for me has been, has, has really gone full circle. Um, and I, I don't know really, you know, what, wh whether I was better off as the noob who didn't know any better when I was Jurgen, or if now I'm more enlightened as a player, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but I enjoy it more than I ever have. So I think I, in that sense, that's all that matters. Am I having more fun? Am I enjoying the games more now? So you find out, you find out what you like, what you don't like, and like how to get. Mm -hmm. you know, try to get more of it. Correct. Yeah. 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 So how I've got to get another, yourself there. I've got another question for you here, and this will be uh, this might be tough. So in the last ten years, what experience has most enlightened you in the role playing hobby? What experience changed you the most, or have you most learned something from? Right. If there's if if that's something you can even answer, I mean, it might not be. Well, this, there are so you many different Because I took an eighteen year hiatus before I came back in the last twelve years, so um, I had a lot more learning to do than you may have had to do. Well, no, I was still I was still off for for a good chunk of time as well. So, I, you know, there are a few things I can't I can't say I can't point to a certain experience uh, in terms of uh, of talking to to Anthony, but there was that moment where like I. Um, Realized there was a much bigger world out there, or there was more ways to think about stuff, mm -hmm. and so I, you know, decided, okay, I'm gonna I made a decision to to be less concrete in my thinking and mm -hmm. like take a take a look at some of the bigger stuff out there. Um, and then so there's been a million conversations with friends, you know. Yeah. Um, Exposure to others changes, yeah, us, a lot doesn't of, it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, I still look back at the Lamentations in Prussia game as one of those things I learned a lot. Yeah, you know, in, in so many different ways. You know, I, I made there were some great mistakes I made, or some great, you know. Sure. But uh, it was, it was, it was, you know, that was a really good experience. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff in all for one too. You know, oh yeah. But I don't know if I can really point to a specific experience and like that was, you know, right. That was really cool. I, I can say though that like I as a player, right. Um, I kept having these experiences, you know, over and over again, where I realized I was very, very comfortable, like in the, in the shoes of a character. Okay. And it, it made so much. It, it was. It, I just felt so much better when we were, um, for the most part, like all kind of like playing characters rather than moving pieces on the board or or right. thinking tactically. And, yeah. And uh, it wasn't about how complex the rules were. Right. It was about like the mindset, you know. Yeah. And it's interesting um, because I grew up playing D and D D twenty, and we played theater of the mind, and it was never really tactical, which is why it was so amazing right. when I came and met all of my peers that grew up doing the same thing I was doing. However, we were never really a tactical group growing up as kids, which is interesting to me, right? I mean, yeah. they they weren't always thinking about the tools and the resources and tactical play, right? Yeah. That was yeah. kind of yeah. I think the other pro pro probably if I had to point to something I don't this was like a big gradual realization so it's not like that moment where you have that you know burning bush you know um, <laughs> you know Saul of Damascus moment or anything like that <laughs> it was you know it it was that I started to realize that there were so many different ways that people enjoy the hobby mm -hmm. or you know like and that were incredibly bad at talking to each other about it oh, and that you know right. if you if you look back at 1974, the, yeah. the name of the book is escaping me at the moment. But the books that they recently have come out about the history of Dungeons and Dragons, the the same things that we're talking about now, like all of them, wow, were things that those guys were talking about years ago. Like you know, just uh, there was there was some. Um, so as far back as 74, they were debating these concepts. Yeah, I mean, they That's might have called them the same thing, but they've been you know these these are experiences these yeah. people have had for a long, long time. Yeah, so. And, well, I'd love to know, you know if you can remember that, Ivan. Please uh, text me the name of that book. Uh, 
or the yeah. author. I'll uh, see if I can find. Yeah, it. definitely, That's cool. definitely. You know, and you know, and even recently, Eloy shared like something with us, and it was, it was somebody like categorizing different kinds of play styles, and talking about, well, this is from this era, and, and I'm like, no, they're not, because I swear to God, you <laughs> were, were playing that. Like, well, that, yeah, you know. and when you think about it. There had to be because there would have been no other games designed. Other other people wouldn't have said, "Screw yeah. this shit! I'm going to make Vampire. I'm going to make right, Tunnels yeah. and Trolls. I'm going to make." So people obviously were dissatisfied with the D20 D and D experience, and they they begun to develop their own stuff. So they had to be experiencing different play styles. They just didn't know where to get it. You know, that makes right. total so, sense. Like, makes total sense, right? And so you know. Some of my friends would disagree with me, but you know, I, you know, to me, it's like there's some people that I simply can't play with. I like them, mm-hmm. but like we want such different things. Sure, sure. That we're going to kill each other every single time we do. So we should talk about anything or talk about game theory or talk about stuff like that, but we shouldn't actually play together because we'll kill each other. Right, you know? right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, l- listen, well, yeah, that's, I think that's true. It's best to understand what it is you, uh, that you get from your friendships and, 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 and what's best to do with, you know, uh, I had friends that liked to go out and drink, and I wasn't a drinker, so I wasn't going to do me any good to go out with them, right? <laughs> because I wasn't going to partake in the. So uh, that's true, I think, of, of of all walks of life, right? That's I'm sure there's bands that you've just fit right into, and then there's other mm-hmm. bands that you know no. something something just doesn't. Oh yeah, job. trust me, trust right. me. You know, I'm, I'm playing with a lot of people now, and there's times I walk and I'm like, oh god, I got, I could do one gig with these guys, and that's and it. Then, yeah, right. <laughs> just just give me my check, gentlemen. I, I the, yeah. The, I'm Unfortunately, out. I'm busy for the next 18 Saturdays in a row. Right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you know, I mean, the, the other thing I, I realized, I learned was like, just because these people have a, such a very different approach mm-hmm. or what they want, they're not crazy. They just want no. something completely different. Because no. you know, look at even even just like I mean, we can all play together in the same room. Yeah. But like even like me and and Brian and Brian mm-hmm. and, and Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, we have different ways we approach the game right. and different ways we approach, you know, we approach how the, um, you know, Brian, Brian has, has t- talked to Anthony. You can hear at the end of the sessions, he's very improv. He's given Anthony things to work with. You know, it's, I'm not doing that. Right. Um, right. but that's, you know, that's how he likes to, likes to do it. And, you wow. know, and, uh, you know, you watch um, yeah. Brian Cartman, and man, he's, it's like watching some guy like write up, you're not sure if it's a book or a movie, but he's good. Yeah. It's a good one. Like, yeah. I want to read this again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen Joe play. I don't know if I've seen yeah, those sessions. Often. He was, yeah, he was, he was in the early sessions. Yeah. Oh, no, early. I, I okay. I may have missed good. those early ones. Okay. Okay. I'll All have right. to go back and I look like for it. those. All right. Yeah. It's been, because I've never played Call of Cthulhu. I, and it's one of those games, you know, Ivan, you and I, we grew up. We've known Call of Cthulhu's been out there for forty years, you know, it's thirty years, whatever. But I've ne- yeah. I had never, still have never played it, never read it, never seen yeah. the rules. And, the but it is, it is like a sightless. staple. It's a state. It's a foundational staple of the hobby, and it's yeah. a different experience. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think anyway, it, it certainly certainly is different as far as the intent uh, of say D and D. Oh, absolutely. Dell, do you have anything to add to that? I have a couple more questions that are that are a little lighter on the subject. No, it, I, basically, everything that I'm prompted to say uh, is is basically an echo of what y'all. You know, it just reminds me everything you're saying. You know, when I when I grew up, it was I, I never played in character. We would like I was saying earlier. I walk over there and grab the sword. I do this. That was pretty much the whole dialogue. If we would. Uh, stumble into I'm a dwarf and then say something stereotypical just to, to get a laugh but otherwise it was all mechanized right and there was enjoyment because you can you can be invested in in a game a myriad of ways right. you know but uh I think like this time you know when uh, I think Jason said something about his earlier game with his brother and it was playing maybe uh the spy game mm-hmm. or something uh, James Bond elevator yeah. yeah and you said he, he did what he did in the elevator to that that you know, and that like, it kind of opened a door for me to explore more in character role play, which I'd never really delved into. Right. So I think we all go through yeah. times in our lives where we want to search out and, and we get curious about different styles of play. Mm-hmm. And as long as those doors keep opening up yeah. and we can test and try. I mean, like we know it's a golden age of role playing. Oh right now. man, that's crazy. Yes, and we've been blessed to test and try all these different games and see what we like because Well then what we learned to be I, mean, I was vast. I was ten running my twenty year old adult brother through James Bond one on one and you know, he's uh he's home from the Marines, he's six foot, solid muscle, you know, and I'm this ten year old kid running my brother 
through James Bond. He's world. I mean, at 20, you know, he's been out in the world. He's done things, and I'm just this 10-year-old kid. And, and we're playing it, and I'm playing. I'm, I'm running, and, he, and I tell him the guy's in the elevator, and he goes, I, I, you know, I stop the elevator, I climb, and he just literally, I, I stop the door of the elevator, and I step in, and I get in his face, and I, and he's literally just telling me, right, which is kind of how I play, but as a kid, it would be your friends would say, well, I'm gonna, you know, do this thing, and I'm gonna intimidate him with the intimidation check or whatever. My brother says. I tell them what I want. I said, well, and I said, well, let's make a, let's make an intimidation check there. You know, and he says, oh, he picks up the dice and he rolls them. I said, well, he just kind of smirks and laughs you off. And he said, well, I, I pull my gun. I put a bullet in his foot. Now what does he say? <laughs> you know, and it's like, okay, so maybe I jumped the gun on that intimidation check, right? I mean, it's like you learn at 10 years old real quick. Well, maybe, maybe I, and then it's like, well, he starts talking. He's chip, 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 because I'm not going to roll intimidation the second time. But I learned that just in playing with my brother who had never played a role-playing game in his life but that experience that he was in character and like I'm not taking the smirk for an answer and he puts a bullet in his foot you know and mm -hmm. uh I'm 10 but it's like that that was like an awakening experience for me even right wow. as, a, as a GM that, that wait a minute he's actually playing a character he's actually playing this this guy in, in that's invested in the elevator and the bad guy and what the information he wants and I thought holy shit yeah, I think that had an effect on you, which oh, you know, yeah. later on, yeah. it just it just made me question moments like that when actually why it, it did something go to a role or does yeah. you know the you know the scale yeah. how much you play and how much you the agency of your actions as opposed to what you may need to roll, you know. So, but um, I don't know. It, it's it's a fascinating hobby, and I'm sure you know, we uh, we probably like anything. You know, you tend to you tend to appreciate the people that that do a thing a particular way because it's 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 hard it's not how you do it like you know i certainly appreciate how both brian's role play oh yeah more absolutely. than i do because to be honest it's it, i'm not it's not how i it's not it's it's something it's how i would like to role play and so you, we tend to gravitate toward those people that like you know like my closest friend and i growing up i'm intense i've always was intense i will always be intense i'm better now that i'm 54 i'm more relaxed about things but he was a, he was the guy who could crack me up. He was the he was the one human being in my life that no matter how bad shit was, he could make me laugh, you know. And so I gravitated toward him as such a great friend because he he had a personality trait I just didn't have. And I think we see that kind of in role playing too. You know, you you're like, wow, I wish I could role play like that. It doesn't change how much I love role playing, but it's like, holy cow, that's that's interesting, right? And. Uh, and I think we have to see this. Thank God for YouTube and people able to put up actual plays and put up some of this stuff so you can see that not everybody does the same the way we did it in the basement as kids. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? It changes. It, 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 it's uh, And everybody's different, and that's what makes the hobby so good. And you can find a spot. I mean, uh, if you don't like how one group does it, you can find a group that does it a way that suits you, right? Um, my last question would be, uh, because lately we've had the conversation about IC play in D20, uh, the insinuation that you can't in character play in D20. Of course, I completely disagree with, of course, because I've done it. I have to ask, do you think that there are games that are truly better for IC play, or is it solely how you want to go about the style of play? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I think there's definitely games that are going to support in character play more but I think it's I think it's more in that they will have less things that will jar you out of that stance okay okay you know like we talked about it earlier so there's there's less things that are going to you know so it's not so much like I can I can play you know OSE mm -hmm. you know old school essential which is essentially BX you know yes. or, or 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 something like that um and you know, drop into character fairly rapidly. Yeah, I can play. You know, um, I can play ubiquity and drop into character fairly rapidly. Um, when I played Pathfinder, I started to find that it was harder just because, in that case, the complexity of the rule set got in my way mm -hmm. because I imagined myself doing things that now there were rule. You know, like there were more rules, and it was getting you yeah. know irritating. Yeah. Um, you know, there, so there's that. There are other games that just have procedures which like get in my way. Right. Meaning, I have to go do this. I have to pull myself out of character long enough right. to do. Which you kind of mentioned the, thing. In the apocalypse world, right? 
Um, powered yeah, by the Apocalypse, I mean. Powered right? by the Apocalypse, yeah. I mean, I Apocalypse know. World, the game, it's, I love to actually play that game because it's, there's a lot of things that people say about PBTA games. It's not, not in the book, not in the book. Wow. You know, it's pretty interesting, you know. Wow, but, really? You know, but yeah, and that's a whole different, that's a whole different so discussion. So people are claiming it's something that it's actually not in the rules. Yeah, that and Monster Hearts was the first one that really, you know, people point to it and say, well, this is where, and I'm looking at those, and no, I didn't. You know, it's wow, it's very it's a, very you know. Have you done videos on that? I've missed those. You no, need to break I, that I, I, down, <laughs> unless you don't want to end up may, getting attacked. May, or, yeah, yeah. Right? Who knows? Yeah, yeah who you knows? might not I, want I'd actually to like, talk about. That. You know, I'd like to play both of them first. I really love to play Apocalypse World. Yeah. You know, but um. You know, it's funny because I the, think you uh, ran us through uh, the sci-fi game. Oh yeah, the, the, which you know, I um, had a freaking blast. I, I like that game. You know, I like oh, that I game. love But any, you know. There's the times when, like, I have to, as for me as a player, um, if I have to do things like make decisions out of character um, in terms of like, well, choose from this list now. Which of these, oh, you know, yeah. the things you're going to get, or or use some of the currency. And none of these are bad things, but these yeah. are things that some of them are just take practice before they become second nature. True. Yeah. Because let's, let's face it, we're rolling dice. You know, yeah. like that's that's not. When when we're playing, when we were playing, let's pretend as as like ten year olds running around, we didn't stop and say, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, I shot you." Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Get take out, you know, take out, take out a couple of dice. Okay, yeah, you did. All right, and I'm really hurt. Okay, you know, <laughs> right, okay, right. back. You know, we didn't do that. We just, no. said, oh, you're dead. You know, that's right. So, so it's a matter of degrees. Yeah. Um, and then there's the things that take me out of. I was thinking about this as we were talking. There was no real place to say it. Um, there were things like you know how much. Um, if a game requires that I take more of a stance of, as an author or a director, or I'm putting, it's my responsibility to put a lot of things into the environment mm-hmm. to tell you a lot about the environment. And, you know, I was talking to Anthony and Eloy a little while ago, and like, if I'm in McDonald's, and my character's in McDonald's, like, and this is just, once again, it's my preference, mm-hmm. I, feel, I feel absolutely comfortable narrating the fries. Yeah. You know, um, I, I feel pretty comfortable saying I'm going to go and order a burger, you know, and, and that kind of stuff, um, or I'm going to go grab the napkins or the soda machine. Mm-hmm. I feel fairly comfortable, you know, if you, if you recall the movie Coming to America. Yes, yes. Right. I feel fairly comfortable saying, you know, when when the some suspicious person, you know, the GM has just told me somebody is coming. I feel fairly comfortable going behind the counter to see if there's a mop, <laughs> looking for a mop or something else like that, and mm-hmm. and saying I'm looking for a mop. You know, I even said to Anthony, I, f- I feel pretty comfortable saying there's a mop there, or like go, I'm gonna go to the mop that's behind the counter. Right, right. Whereas Anthony kind of retorted, "Well, I I feel more comfortable saying I'm looking for the mop or something like it." Right. You know. Right. The, you know. Um, which okay. which is that pen- what I'm, penultimate? Right. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, that was, right. I'm I mean, just that's, saying that's that for me. That's that penultimate version of communication. Right. Those, those what things I, should be there. Right. Can I say I'm and, looking for the mop is ideal, I think. For and, and broad and say, is there a mop? Is there, you know, it's more like I'm looking for a mop or something about that big that I can mm-hmm. hit this guy with. I'm just going to do, you know, that I can, you know, take this guy out with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The fry lighter basket. Okay. You know, yeah. um, I feel, you know, that doesn't jar me out of character. Right. Um, saying those things or, or, or declaring those things into existence. Right. Um, Declaring my intention, I'm looking for this because I want to hit him with it, and, right. and so like that's I'm stepping out of character. I'm not normally I don't walk around saying I'm I'm going to the back of this thing, and I'm looking to see something. Right. I can, but but I'm declaring my intention so that right. I'm communicating to the game master. Here's yeah. so we don't have a back and forth of what do you do, can that? Mm-hmm. I just tell you. Um, but I don't feel comfortable narrating the black Lexus that just pulled up. Wow, you know, next next to my car and the guy. Oh, you mean as a character? You mean or, as a character? Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Right, or or the or the or the all of a sudden my phone rings and it's my my stockbroker. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable narrating those things That's because amazing. at that point I'm I'm out of out of character. Yeah. You see, know? and I this is ironic. I would have told you. I don't know. I mean, I I haven't even looked at our, that Flames Princess uh, session, the Prussia f- sessions. But I, I think I tended early to do that. I tended early to vision the fireplace. Matter of fact, I think when I said I came oh, in. Oh, you did, and that was, and that was there. There should be a fireplace. I mean, yeah, that when was, I sat I, down I and kicked my, awesome. yeah. I said I kicked my cold, my frozen feet, my boots off. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was creating something that was, no, was changing the it's, uh, it's challenge winter in Prussia. of the game. It yeah. was just to set the scene. Yeah. But right. so I, I do feel comfortable with that as long as I'm not taking advantage of, like, for instance, I would never want to create, say, a shotgun. Because that right. changes the actual challenge of, of, of if I if there was a shotgun behind the bar, 
then I then I wouldn't need to buy the shotgun in the rule book, right? So that's that's where we're break we're literally breaking the rules, right? We're creating a shotgun that I normally would have had to buy from the rules, right? So those yeah. are those are moments where I'm like, yeah, you know, I can look for a book to pop the guy on the head, right? If we're in a library, when I say I'm grabbing the book, I'm gonna hit the guy on the head. That because there's gonna be a book here I can pick up and knock the guy in the head with. But creating a shotgun behind the bar, that's when when in the rules you have to purchase a shotgun or, or somehow get a shotgun. That's that's where yes. I'm taking liberties with the actual rules, right? The the liberty of I'm taking liberty with the challenge of the game, right? Well, that, that, that's what I kind of spoke about stepping on toes, like either right. with the GM or your other players. When you infer or you take you you steal agency or hijack agency away that's in the, their jurisdiction. Yeah. So it's plausible to do something. I just call it within arms reach. It's your yeah. character. And you, yeah. But you could think know. of it at least for me in terms of staying in character um for me it's 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 helpful not to think about it as like as uh stuff that's in their jurisdiction right or it's, it's more like it's a risk i don't want the responsibility right right and there are there are games that you know in the rules you have the responsibility that's now right. to make to to set the scene or make all these things up and that makes it very difficult for me to stay in character. Yeah, and because Dark of Age now, of Man, um, in our game, Dark Age of Man suggests the players should do that, should take liberties to create the, the world. Which So in that sense, it would be harder for... Or it would not be harder. It wouldn't be ideal for you in character in Dark Age well, of Man. Well, you know, it, I, guess, I guess it depends. Like, you know, I, don't, I haven't seen the guys do that. But, like, I mean, if I were to talk about, you know, if I went to, you know, Mort's place, and instead of them asking if there's a church, I'd say, well, I'm going to go to the church. Yeah. I wouldn't... To me, it's like okay, it's Dark Age, age England, yeah. you know, or Dark Age. There probably is a church. Yeah, I'm not so. You know, if I said, you know, I went to the, you know, the, um, I don't know, the uh, the musket makers. Well, that might be a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be, yeah, that would be one of those where the GM would that actually actually have to stop playing and say, well, let me explain. There are no musket technology. Yeah, or that, gonna, that would I'm be something this. that gets you know everybody just kind of. You know, or, that's, or, that you shuts know, down the game until. Yeah, we just... that's a bad. That's a bad example. But if I were to say I go to the blacksmiths yeah. and and look at the swords he has hanging up for sale, right? That's 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 crossing the line. Yeah, you know, and it's not just because you have to buy one of those normally. It's just because mm -hmm. I, you know, there's a blacksmith. He should have some stuff there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's got there. Right, but, but you don't know. That's right. damn well should be a blacksmith. Yep. You know, oh, I don't, absolutely. I don't mind up yeah, and, like I, that. and I think I think the more mature we are, the more we navigate these things very well especially culture of play the more you're together the more you do this the more you do navigate that you're headed to the blacksmith but you're not about to because what's going to happen at the blacksmith is going to be an it's going to be an actual barter you know you're not going to assume there's swords there and that you're going to be able to just get one there's going to be a conversation with the blacksmith so if you make that conclusion then the blacksmith just becomes a cashier to 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 sell your sword what True. we want is an inner. We want an interaction between the blacksmith and the character. So maybe that creates conflict. Maybe there's a barter. Maybe there's an obligation. That's more interesting than just saying I'm going to go buy a sword from the blacksmith because now you've concluded that the blacksmith. You've just relegated my blacksmith to not only being there but just being a cashier. Well, he's an arms dealer. You know, yeah, he's an arms dealer. But right? the, you know, yeah. you know, the um, really interesting thing is you watch uh, the Call of Cthulhu session game. I forget which session it is. And Brian Cortemunch, Albert Smalls, you know, makes up. He talks. He goes to the bakery across the street from his. Yeah, shop. Dale was talking. And about makes that. up the bakery. Yeah. Makes up the. Her name's Marta. Yeah. You know, and Mar Marta Taranowski. Taranowski's bakery. Yeah. He just made the whole thing up. But I love that. And because that was awesome. because it, it was gives awesome. Anthony yeah. territory to play with. Oh, too. absolutely, and he and he did. Yeah. Um, but yeah. um, and to me, like saying. Saying that kind of stuff doesn't jar me out of character. Mm -hmm. If I constantly had the responsibility to do that, yeah. or if I had the responsibility to do a lot more, like now, I'm, that would make it tougher and tougher and tougher. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't feel it's, it's, you know, I'm taking anybody's agency or, right. you know, uh, going. I don't, I don't think that's a. a right. well, I would do that less than Brian did, but like it's certainly, I didn't look at that and go, oh my god, I can't believe what he did. No. no. But but I get what you're saying because if you do that as a, if it, it, if you want to experience the thing, right. you can't create the thing. Right. Well, there's a game. Here's a good example of real life because I'm giving you this hypothetical BS. I played this really cool game called Ribbon Drive. Okay. Um, played it with these guys, um, and the game 
p- part of what the game has you do is you each, you know, d- uh, duh, you each have a character. But um, you're given in, in every any given scene, like somebody becomes the game master in that that particular scene. I forget exactly. I'm, I'm probably misrepresenting it. Mm-hmm. But the person that speaks last mm-hmm. in that scene, mm-hmm. yeah, one person actually sets the scene. They they get the starter. Okay. Where are you now? So they have the responsibility of where you are, telling us where we've gone now. We were in a car ride, so now we're at a graveyard. Now we're at this like little backwater, you know, um, southern town. Okay. The person that speaks last gets to inst- in- introduce an obstacle, like something that people have to overcome. So in this particular case, we pull up to this, we pull up to this um, little convenience store in this little like backwater southern town. I'm the last person to speak. One of the characters is kind of this androgynous, like teenager, mm-hmm. and so the I so I introduce this obstacle of these locals that are like picking on them. Wow! You know, you can't tell if you use a man or a woman, all <laughs> stuff, and, and the sheriff that comes out accusing the character, right. the player character, of causing some kind of ruckus. And these boys was you know right, and the game gave me the responsibility of doing that. We all have the responsibility to do stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. We got to, however, I was not feeling in character, like not no, even a little bit, but again, because it was, you know, it was fun, but that's it was, right. It was and why? Cool. Because it turns the game is it, again, it objectifies the actual game. Right. And it was, yeah. you know, it was, it was, it was intentionally the, the game intentionally had you cause drama. Right. And cause, and which was, which so it was fun. Yeah. But it was, it was, I tried as best I could because I like to to try to get inside his head, but it really I was more like kind of yeah. portraying him every once in a while. But and that would it, it be was a, my responsibility. that begs the question. Too late, probably in this podcast to go to that. But then that begs the question: What is role playing? Because this would be another topic. So oh, let's not go there. Play this, I mean, what yeah. is role playing? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, I would have my own answer. Yeah. yeah. Right. And this this yeah. this could be an entire podcast in and of itself. I don't want my, you know, what is I don't want my channel canceled, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to add something uh, real quick here. When we was in the Mars game, when I was playing Thane, I always thought it was peculiar because it was one night uh, and he was a bit of a thief, rogue, if you remember that. But when I was doing this description, like I said, I said it was a full moon. And that was because it was, I was trying to set the stage to where it would benefit me. Right. To have more lighting and do what I need to do. Which is breaking the rules. You do. We, I even knew it, but the what my point is, and he said, "No, it's not." You know what I mean? So you had to stop me on that. And then I thought right after that, if I was playing a priest, I wouldn't have did that. I was in the headspace yeah. of trying to be a thief, right. so I was actually trying to steal that agency. Sure, from my, that was when I had that big light bulb moment go off. I yeah. said, "Dang, yeah." But anyway, because you're so you're so in character, character, character that you're visualizing your character as a. As yeah, a, and as even, an in my, even in, in my scene. description, yeah. right? Even and in, in a way, again, that is areas. that is viewing your character as an object in a scene. What would the scene look like for my character to be, as opposed to being a thief sneaking through the dark alley? Right, you're oh, actually I was seeing through a your lit thief alley. in a scene. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't. I, but that, that's where I say step on toes. That was sure. Ivan's call. Sure. But still, I was still trying to sneak it in and get away with it yeah. because. Well, and I'm sure I, I stepped on toes in uh, Prussia. I don't remember. But I may have, I may have stretched out a little bit. I don't well, know. no, I was, I was, it was, it was, that was a hoot. It was a hoot. And that, you know, that's funny because Phobos and Demios are small. So I mean, you know, it's not that much moonlight, dude. <laughs> You're on my, there's a little moon, dude. It's not going to do, not going to, not going to help moon? you out. What moon? Much. This is Mars, yeah. man. Does Mars have a moon? It's, it doesn't have a moon. They have two, it has two and they're, they're ridiculously small. Are they it's really? Not, I didn't know oh, that. yeah. That's how yeah, ignorant I am and, of our, our yeah, solar system, man. I have yeah, no so, idea. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I got to run in a second, but you know, it, it, there there is a lot. To, I've thought thinking a lot lately about like you know reasons that people play or like sometimes that like the, the styles look so different. And you know, there is there are definitely people that want to play in character mm-hmm. and like have the experience. You know, let me let me let me be this guy in this situation. There's a lot of people that want to play and and they want to have a, a you know and the play to be about like the character and their motivations and their arc and stuff like that. They don't know what the arc's going to be, mm-hmm. which is fine too. It's a different mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's, there's just a dungeon crawl. Let's, let's do the thing. Mm-hmm. Let's, mm-hmm. let's do the thing. And the characters are a little bit more like tokens, mm-hmm. which, you know, mm-hmm. um, there are, there's a play style. I think it kind of lives in the same house as character poisoning a little bit, and we, you know, where you have this idea of this is the character, and then the system doesn't really back that up right. necessarily. Um, but 
you know, there's games, there are people that like to be about, like, play to be about what the characters do, you know, right? Right. But there's people, I believe there's people that, that, that like to play to be about who the characters are. Yeah. And they're yeah. going to show you. So it's not necessarily like what point. they're doing. What they're doing isn't all that important. Like, it's not about Lord of the Rings and we're going to go here. It's, it, and it's not necessarily about being that character, how that character would re, re, be in that situation. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. This is Han Solo. This mm-hmm. is, you know, whomever. Mm-hmm. This is the, you know, um, Conan. Right. And, but it's a portrayal. This is John Wick. Right. This is how John Wick is. This is what he does. Mm-hmm. And it's not so much about, it's not so much about that particular situation or them making decisions. They're showing you who this character is all the time. Right. And if it doesn't work, they get a little mad. Yeah, sure. And I, and I can honestly, <laughs> I can speak to that from a personal. When I talk about yeah. frustration as character, right. there have been games where I was attempting to show who my character was, right. not so much relevant to the situation. And again, that, that led to some frustration in me as a player trying to express my character a particular way. So I've actually oh, been, I've, I've, I've actually happened, been yeah. on that side as a player, right? Learning, okay. So, but again, if somebody would have said to me, "Is it important to you to express your character? Is it important to you to be a character?" I would have, I would have, I would not have known that that frustration came from me trying to express my character versus being my character. So that's and a I great point you bring of, up because I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have spoke to the difference in those two things. Yeah, I, I have a tendency when I'm talking about that to express like all these positive, like or like tough, badass character, but you could. There are plenty of people that like want to express the tragic hero, or sure. the, you know, whatever it is. You know, I'm the Joker. You know, the, the you know the the, uh, the tragic one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. That kind you, of you stuff. Know, the you tragic know. one. Well, and there are people who get upset, like that. right? That you that that you know. Uh, I was I just read somewhere somebody was complaining that they would have been killed in their five five E game. The DM the DM stole their death uh, by following the rules when they actually wanted to sacrifice their character to save somebody in the party. And the DMs just went straight to the rules and said, "Well, you didn't, you didn't die. You get, make your save throws. Make your." And that person was angry that the DM actually used the rules and said, "No, but you're not dead." And it's it's like, well, if you wanted to die, but there's an example of what you're saying, right? They they wanted to express who their character was through actually sacrificing. Rules be damned, right? Right. And, uh, right. So I'm sure they were angry. Well, Which, they were angry because they were posting about it, right? They were. But it's, I mean, and I probably spoke. I, I probably said that too negatively, but it's interesting. But yeah. like you're. And like almost night pegging somebody, it's like, oh, you know what? That's, I know we're really bumping heads. That's what they want to do. Yeah. You know? Well, I've been on all these yeah. from all these positions, right? I've, 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 I have, but I, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you that's what I want. Um, but see, I, I, uh, I wasn't aware of what it was I was trying to do or what it was I wanted in my intent, so to speak, right? But, yeah, we we can have wants. Like, he mentioned Han Solo. And Han Solo's a rogue, and you can play that character like it is. But even in the story, Han Solo learns. You know, it's, he gets to the point of what he needs. He changes yeah. when, when he when yeah when he sacrifices. So you have to reach kind of mm-hmm. that for deeper play. It at least to me. Yeah. To to be like Luke Skywalker is just a, a sure. flat two D character. You know what I mean? Right. He's, he's the white hat. But well, yeah. But that it, and I see people play. I would hopefully think that they can get to that point. And I also wanted to make a small point about. You can get caught in a role playing game where you're just a foil for somebody else too. Oh, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. So, but anyway, I'm sure. I'm trying to interject because I got to get off here. Yeah, we, yeah we're, done. we're done. This is those been fantastic. At seven o'clock. Hey, hey, Ivan, thank you so much, my friend, for uh, chatting with us. It's great, and uh, to hear your yeah. Call of Cthulhu experience is direct. What's great. oh, it's a it's a hoot. I'm really really yeah. digging in. Yeah. So, but well, we're enjoying it. And it, it sounds yeah, like. So. He may be like Prince. They'll be putting up videos of Call of Cthulhu sessions long after he's dead. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> he'll have he'll have more music after he's dead. Mm-hmm. Right? He'll have more Call of Cthulhu sessions go up after Anthony's dead. <laughs> yeah, never know, never know. They have this entire backlog. It, I mean, he's got, he's, the, he's, yeah, got right. cat, he's got a cat. Actually, there's a video of I think he and I talking that should be coming up like today at some point. So he's got a backlog of videos, man. Oh, so yeah, it, it might be like that. Wow. Prince or Eddie Van Halen, one of those well, things. That's they, find awesome. the, they find the archive. And, wow. <laughs> right. All Thank right. You wait guys. till we see this. Outstanding. All right. Pleasure. And we'll talk to you guys again soon. Right. I'm going to okay. stop the broadcast and then 